Hello, good morning. I welcome all of you to the uh, second day of lecture of uh, computational fluid dynamics as far as my part is concerned. Uh, I know uh, there were feedbacks that I was going very fast in my first lecture. Uh, this was intentional because uh, the second part of the course which I will be covering uh, which constitute the core part of the computational fluid dynamics after Professor Puranik had laid down the foundations of fluid mechanics. The syllabus is lot although I am trying to cover it as a first course on uh, computational fluid dynamics. So, in the my first lecture was just an introduction. So, I was in intentionally uh, quite fast. Uh, so, in the previous lecture I had given an introduction uh, where I would like to emphasize certain points. Uh, first point which I want, I, want, I want to emphasize is that I mentioned that uh, what is the definition of computational fluid dynamics. Uh, I had suggested that you can define it as a method by which you can develop video camera like tool by which you can create a movie of fluid mechanics, fluid flow and heat transfer. And once you create a movie of fluid mechanics and heat transfer, fluid flow and heat transfer, uh, the picture of this movies should corresponds to uh, velocity vectors, streamline, vorticities. Uh, because one picture or one movie is not sufficient enough to give the complete story about the fluid flow. So, we need different types of movies, different types of pictures to get an understanding. I also mentioned that if you create a movie of a flow situation uh, to understand the characteristics of the flow, this is of primary interest to uh, scientist. However, for an engineer uh, what is of interest is certain engineering parameter. Like an automobile industry, they may not be that much interested in let us say flow structure behind the car or across an aeroplane. But what they may be interested is what is the uh, price they have to pay uh, as far as fuel economy is concerned and which is uh, dictated by the fluid flow governing parameter, uh, engineering parameters such as lift force and drag force. So, once you create a movie you basically get a certain data and once you get a data in terms of the flow properties you need to post process this data near to the solid object to convert it into engineering parameters. <coughs> so, for that you have to do numerical differentiation to calculate the local parameters like local uh, wall heat transfer or wall shear stress and you may have to calculate, uh, you may have to do numerical integration to calculate the global parameters or an average parameter like total rate of heat transfer on a wall or total uh, shear force on a wall. Uh, thereafter, I had gone into the derivation of the uh, continuity equation and momentum and energy equation. I had done the derivation in slightly different manner using a control volume based formulation. Uh, I derived the uh, momentum and energy equation saying them to be a transport equation and I mentioned that this is a transport process which is going on as far as the momentum and energy conservation is concerned. Uh, and in this transport process I had mentioned that whenever there is a transportation there is a driver and there is a passenger. So, I mentioned that the mass flow rates acts like a driver and the scalar quantities uh, like the component of the velocity u velocity is the passenger in case of x momentum v in case of y momentum and temperature in case of energy equation. I also showed you an animation uh, for flow between ice and fire to give you a feel. Uh, I would like to repeat that animation. So, let us go to the animation I will show you in this window. So, I will show you an animation. Uh, uh, Although in the earlier lecture I had shown you as a static picture, but I believe that this animation this is just created by a PowerPoint animation and I'll, as all of you are teacher I would draw your attention that you can create PowerPoint animation to give a better feel of a concept. So, these are some of the few animations which I will be showing you. So, let us suppose uh, now you can see 
here that uh, you will see an animation. <coughs> so, when you are standing between ice and fire and if I had mentioned that the diffusion phenomena which I am showing you here as a conduction heat transfer, the temperature which you experience is the mean of the two temperature that is 0 plus 100 divided by 2 that is 50 degree centigrade. This is I had mentioned about the uh, two transport mechanism molecular transport and uh, advective transport. Uh, so, this uh, right now the process which is being shown here corresponds to the molecular transport. Then the second transport which I mentioned uh, advective transport here I am taking an example for heat transfer. Uh, this phenomena I would like to mention that uh, they, they can be understood they can we can get a better feel of the advection phenomena through an example for uh, heat transfer as compared to the momentum transport. Here if you are standing between ice and fire and the temperature which you experience depending upon the flow direction, if the flow is from the ice side and I mentioned in the my previous lecture that uh, when we talk of advection phenomena we are saying a case where the flow velocities are very large. So, if the flow velocity is very large from the ice side you experience a temperature close to 0 degree centigrade. Vice versa if the flow is from the fire side you experience a temperature close to 100 degree centigrade. Now, let us take a situation where you have a combination of uh, advection and diffusion. This is a more practical real world situation pure advection is a hypothesis because in uh, practical situation you will not encounter pure advection there will always be some diffusion. So, you cannot consider diffusion to be negligible. So, this is more practical situation which we call as a convection. Now, if, when you look into the flow as I mentioned earlier that the magnitude of the flow also dictates the temperature which you feel. So, let us suppose from the ice side the temperature is 1 meter per second then let us then if there was no flow you were experiencing 50 degree centigrade, when, but when the flow started from the ice side the temperature which you will experience will be less than 50 degree centigrade. In the first example which I had shown here if the flow is 1 meter per second you get 40 degree centigrade. And if the flow velocity increases from 1 to 100, you may experience temperature as low as 10 degree centigrade. Now, vice versa if the flow is from the fire side with 1 meter per second, you may exp you will experience a temperature greater than 50 degree centigrade. If it is 1 meter per second, let us say you get experience a temperature of 60 degree centigrade and if it increases to 100 meter per second, you experience a temperature close to 90 degree centigrade. So, this was what I uh, this gives you a feel of the different types of phenomena and after this I had gone into the derivation of the uh, continuity equation and uh, then I went into derivation of the uh, momentum equation and in momentum equation I would like to show you that uh, these are the terms which represents the rate of change of x momentum, y momentum and energy equation and when you do a control volume analysis. <coughs> This is the x momentum which is going inside the control volume from the left surface and from the other surfaces these are the x momentum which are going in or out. So, using this x momentum at the momentum fluxes x momentum flux multiplied by surface area at the different phases of the control volume you can just you have to just do a balancing out minus in and divide by the volume. When you divide by the volume as these are flux term you get surface area divided by volume. Surface area divided by volume give you a length scale in the denominator and when you take the limit corresponding to that length scale you get a differential term. Similarly, we do in case of y momentum. So, here y momentum flux multiplied by surface area is shown at the different phases of the control volume and here again when you do a balance and divide by the volume you get a differential term corresponding to what we call as the advection term in y momentum equation. When you go to the energy equation in a earlier slide it was x momentum flux and y momentum flux. In an energy equation here we are talking of an incompressible flow and in that case you get enthalpy fluid enters with some, some enthalpy it leaves with some other enthalpy. So, here you do a balance of enthalpy and divide by the volume and end up with a differential term for momentum equation. So, let us come back to the lecture. 
So, that we had shown you the different fluxes as far as the advection term is concerned. I had shown you animation for uh, the diffusion phenomena, advection phenomena and a convection phenomena. And other than uh, so other than this diffusion terms, I had mentioned that uh, other than the advection term, we have a diffusion term. And in case of uh, uh, momentum transport, the diffusion terms comes from the viscous forces. So, I had shown you there are certain viscous forces which act at the faces of the control volume. And basically, when you apply, uh, when you take a fluid control volume, you consider the viscous forces acting in the x direction. When you do a balance, you get a del dot sigma term. And when you apply, uh, what I, I would like to draw an analogy between the fluid flow and heat transfer that whenever we do a derivation, like in case of heat transfer class, maybe in the first class of heat transfer, when you derive, you get del dot q. And similarly, in momentum transport, when you do a derivation, you get del dot sigma term. Then uh, there are two types of laws in fluid mechanics and heat transfer, one which is called as a fundamental law and second which is called as a uh, subsidiary law. So, uh, law of conservation of mass, momentum and energy are fundamental laws and Newton's law of viscosity, Fourier law of heat conduction are called as subsidiary laws. Because what happens is that we correlate stresses with velocity gradient using this laws and uh, using let us say Newton's law and we correlate the conduction heat fluxes with temperature gradient US using Fourier law of heat conduction. So, with that we get final diffusion terms which is del square k del square u in case of x momentum k del square v sorry uh, k, uh, mu del square u in case of uh, x momentum mu del square v in case of y momentum and k del square t for energy equation. So, with this I had shown you the total uh, mu stroke equation in dimensional as well as non dimensional form. Towards the end of the last lecture I had discussed about the uh, flow properties and uh, fluid properties. So, flow properties are those properties which represents a flow and they are velocities, pressures and uh, vorticities and the fluid properties are the thermophysical property like density, viscosity, thermal conductivity and so on. I also mentioned that there are two types of parameter, one which is called as a governing parameter and second which is called as an engineering parameter. I had mentioned that whenever we do an analysis, we try to do in a non-dimensional form. So, the non-dimensional form of this parameter like governing parameter is Reynolds number, Prandtl number, Weber number, Rayleigh number, Grashof number. And the non-dimensional form of the engineering parameters like non-dimensional form of lift force is lift coefficient, drag coefficient, uh, friction factor and so on. So, with this I had completed the last lecture and uh, let us start today's lecture. Uh, I, I was left with 4 or 5 slides of the previous lecture on introduction. So, I will start with those. Uh, this is a very important uh, subtopic initial and boundary condition. I would like to mention that the uh, governing equation or the conservation law which I had discussed earlier, that same equation is applicable for various problems in fluid mechanics and heat transfer. However, so the same law, same equations are applicable for many situations of fluid mechanics and heat transfer, almost all the situations in fluid mechanics and heat transfer. In some cases, you may have some need, you may need to have some additional terms uh, to for some complex uh, situations as far as modeling is concerned. But this Navier-Stokes equation is applicable for large range of fluid mechanics and heat transfer problem. However, what you see is that you get different results. So, if let us say there are 100 problems and you get 100 different results, what is that which makes the results different? What makes the result difference is the domain and the boundary condition. So, note that this initial and boundary condition acts as a jury to the problem, they dictate the solution. So, it is a very important thing you, sh uh, you should try to understand the different types of boundary condition. If you look into the classification of boundary condition, mathematicians have defined it into three types. Here I have taken an example of heat transfer to explain the boundary condition in a general manner. I would like to point out that this is basically a two dimensional unsteady state heat conduction equation with volumetric heat generation. 
and in this equation what you see is that you have a first derivative with respect to time. So, you need one condition in time which we call as an initial condition. There are two derivatives in the x direction. So, you need two conditions at x direction. Let us say I take an example. Let us suppose you have a plate, we are taking a two dimensional heat transfer case. Let us say we have a plate whose which is taken from a furnace. Let us suppose when you took it from furnace the temperature is 200 degree centigrade and let us assume that left wall is maintained suddenly when the we took the this plate from the furnace we had subjected it to certain boundary condition. Let us assume that this plate is subjected to a constant wall temperature on the left wall. It is insulated on the bottom wall. On the right wall there is a constant heat flux boundary condition and on the top wall there is a convective boundary condition with h and t infinity as convective heat transfer coefficient and ambient temperature. So, with this problem setup, now what I wanted to highlight is that you need two boundary conditions in the x direction. So, what are the two x direction? This is corresponds to x equals to 0. This right wall corresponds to x equals to L 1. There are double, there is a second derivative in y direction. So, you need two boundary conditions in y direction which is y is equals to 0 which is insulated and y is equals to L 2 which is convective heat transfer boundary condition. So, this looking into the order of the differential equation, you can know, uh, you can decide that how much, how many conditions you need to solve that problem. Now, mathematicians have classified the boundary conditions into three types, Dirichlet where the value of the variable is prescribed. Note that here we are talking of temperature, but this definition is generic in nature. This is also applicable for fluid flow case. So, in fluid flow situations if the temperature is prescribed, if the sorry if the velocity is prescribed then that then also it is called as a Dirichlet boundary condition. Then we have a Neumann boundary condition is that where the gradient is prescribed like when it is insulated what is the gradient? Gradient is 0. When it is a constant heat flux what is the gradient? Gradient is minus q w by k. Okay. So, whether the constant is 0 or non-zero if the gradient is prescribed then that boundary condition is called as a Neumann boundary condition. However, if you have a linear combination like when you have a q conduction is equals to q convection at top wall, then at top wall q conduction is equals to minus k dt by dy at y is equals to L 2 is equals to q convection is by applying Newton's law of cooling h temperature, temperature at top wall minus t infinity. Now, this expression consists of a gradient of temperature and the value of temperature. So, it can be expressed as a linear combination of temperature and its normal gradient. So, when temperature is prescribed it is Dirichlet, when gradient is prescribed it is Neumann and when you have a linear combination of the temperature of the variable and its gradient then this is called as a Robin or mixed type of boundary. This is a very important topic. This, this example I had taken from heat transfer. Now, let me take an example from fluid flow. This is a classical problem of uh, heat and fluid flow across a uh, circular cylinder. Right now, I am showing it as a circular cylinder, but it could be an aeroplane also. So, it is an external flow problem. So, in this case, uh, when you want to set up the problem, as I said that if you want to create a movie, you have to zoom to certain region in space. So, similarly, you here you want to create a movie of let us say flow across a cylinder or heat transfer across a cylinder, then you have to zoom to some region in space. So, here the space which we take to let us say create a movie of fluid mechanics is what is shown here. This is the left wall, this is the right wall and this is the bottom wall and this is the top wall. So, within this wall you have zoomed. Now, when you zoom to a region in space, then as I said that then this makes your computational domain. And another thing you should know that you cannot arbitrarily zoom to a region in space. You may feel that if I take very small instead of this rectangle, size of this rectangle, if I take very small whether it is ok or not, uh, you have to actually understand the boundary conditions which you are using before selecting the domain. So, let us talk about the boundary condition. So, what is the boundary condition on the left hand side? Left hand side we are taking the inlet boundary conditions 
So, when you talk of free stream flow, the inlet boundary condition is u is equals to u infinity, v is equals to 0 and temperature is ambient. We are taking a problem where the circular cylinder is having a temperature, it could be two types of heat transfer problem. First constant wall temperature, second constant heat flux. So, here I had shown both these cases. So, when there is a free stream flow, we have to take an inlet boundary. So, the flow comes from this side, we have to take an outlet boundary and it goes on this side. Now, let us look into the boundary conditions which we are applying and let us try to understand that as far as this position of the left wall and the right wall is concerned, whether it could be arbitrary or there should be some physical basis of the position of this boundary. I would like to draw your attention again as I mentioned that CFD is just a numerical method where which is guided by fluid mechanics principle. Okay. So, here we will use numerical method, but we have to whatever we do we have to be guided by the fluid mechanics principle. So, I am asking question that the position of this left wall can it be too close? What happens if it is very too close? Physically if you consider flow across any object, let us suppose if you consider flow across a car, let us assume that this instead of this circle there is a car here. What happens when the flow comes near to the surface of the car? Let me go to the outlet and then maybe you can appreciate this in a much better way. I am saying this is the outflow boundary condition and this is the inflow boundary conditions. If you, how does the streamline as far as your understanding in fluid mechanics is concerned, what do you feel how the streamline pattern will be? Initially it will be straight up to certain distance, then what should happen? It will start the streamlines which are above the horizontal center line passing through the cylinder will try to move up, will have to move up. The streamlines which are below the horizontal center line of passing through the center of the circle. Let us take a horizontal center line which is passing through the center of the circle and let us try to understand the streamline pattern. The streamlines which are above this horizontal line will initially be horizontal when it comes close to the cylinder, it has to go up. The streamline which are below the horizontal line of the center, uh, uh, horizontal line have to go down to obey mass conservation. Now, if you take this boundary very close, so what we are, the deviation of the streamline basically means that the velocity is deviating from u is equal to u infinity when the streamline is deviating from horizontal, when it is becoming inclined, what does it mean? When it is horizontal, V velocity is 0. As soon as it gets inclined, it means that there is some V velocity which is generated. So, if you take this left boundary very close to this, this let us say car or a cylinder or an airplane, what you are doing is that you are forcing that U is equals to U infinity, which is not correct. Okay. So, this left boundary needs to be and this depends upon the Reynolds number also. Like at rho Reynolds number, the deviation start with a much larger upstream lens because the diffusion phenomena is more dominant in those cases, if it is a low Reynolds number case. So, this upstream length, let me call the distance, the horizontal distance from the center of the cylinder to this wall as let us say upstream length. So, this upstream length for low Reynolds number should be much larger as compared to that at the high Reynolds number. So, this is about the inlet boundary. Now, let us go to the outlet boundary. What is the boundary conditions which we are using at the outlet? This boundary condition, where do you use? Del u by del x is equals to 0. This you use for flow in a plane channel or for flow in a pipe. This is what is called as a fully developed boundary condition. You are saying that the inertia of the flow in the stream wise direction is equals to 0. When you assume this fully, so this is basically a fully developed boundary conditions which are you are using at outlet with pressure is equals to 0. 
whenever you use this boundary condition, you are saying that the gradient of u velocity is, is equal to 0. Based on your understanding in fluid mechanics, you have to make sure that the flow which is going behind this, let us say, car or an aeroplane, can whether the flow will be fully developed immediately downstream of this object or it needs some distance to get fully developed. What does the fluid mechanics say? You need some distance, quite some distance, large distance. Note that in computational fluid dynamics, this outflow is a very critical thing. Many people use CFD software without proper understanding and they take this boundary very close and do not realize that they are using a fully developed boundary condition in a region where there is a flow separation, where there are vortices, where this expressions are not applicable. Like if you consider a car, what happens behind the car? When the flow passes through the top surface of the car, on the rear side it gets separated because on the rear side there is a diffuser type of situation where the flow has to diverge. So, it is an adverse pressure gradient which gives rise to flow separation. Now, in the flow separation, separation region, there are vortices which are generated and the flow is not fully developed. So, if you put your right boundary just behind the object, then you are for forcing this boundary condition saying that the flow is fully developed, but you know from the understanding of fluid mechanics that when the flow separation takes place, then the flow has to go to much larger distance downstream after it becomes fully developed. You may say that at outlet, why cannot we use u is equals to u infinity and v is equals to 0? I would say you can use, but for that you need much larger downstream length to apply this boundary condition. If you try to understand the flow behind the object, maybe a car or an aeroplane, initially there is a flow separation and then the flow becomes fully developed and then it reaches to u is equals to u infinity. Okay. And the position of this, you want as close to this object as possible. Why? The idea is very simple. Let us suppose you want to create a video, you want to zoom to a region where most of the action is happening. But here what I am trying to caution you is that you have to zoom to a region very intelligently because this boundary of this region, you are applying a boundary condition and that boundary condition should be realistic, should be guided by the fluid mechanics principle. So, understanding of fluid mechanics should be used in the positioning of this boundary. You cannot be use these boundaries at any position. Okay, and you want it to be as close as this object because most of the action is happening near to the solid surface and smaller is your domain size. So, smaller is the size of the domain, you can have larger number of grid and get more accuracy in the result or you have you can get the result in less computational time, less computational cost. You have to run your computer, you have to pay the electricity bill for less amount of time. <coughs> so, this is about the left boundary and the right boundary. If you go to the bottom boundary and top boundary, again here you can say that why cannot I use u is equals to e infinity, v is equals to 0, but the boundary condition which I am showing you is a better boundary condition because as you move away from the cylinder, initially this boundary condition will be obeyed, then that boundary condition will be obeyed. So, this is a better boundary condition. Using this boundary condition, you can get an accurate result with lesser height of the computational domain. To use u is equals to u infinity on the bottom and top boundary, you need a much larger domain height. Okay, so, this is, uh, so here uh, boundary condition which I am showing you is called as a free slip boundary condition. What free slip boundary condition means is like here I am showing you v is equals to 0. What is the v velocity on this boundary? This is a horizontal boundary. So, v is basically normal velocity is equals to 0 and what is u velocity on this boundary? It is a tangential. 
and what is this direction y to the boundary? This is normal. So, this is the normal gradient of tangential velocity is equals to 0. So, in general a free slip boundary condition means normal velocity is equals to 0, normal gradient of tangential velocity is equals to 0. For temperature it is like an insulated boundary condition, normal gradient of temperature is equals to 0. Okay. So, <coughs> this is a very important topic. So, I had to discuss this in detail. So, I had taken an example, a classic example of an external flow and with that I had discussed the boundary conditions for the fluid flow. But let me tell you that again the in the earlier slide as I discussed these different types of boundary condition, these are not only applicable for temperature that is in this slide, but this definition is equally applicable for the fluid flow situation. So, here you can see what is the type of this boundary condition, here the variable is prescribed. So, this is a Dirichlet boundary condition. On this boundary gradient is prescribed, so this is a Neumann boundary condition. Okay. So, here also you have different types of boundary condition, here you do not have a Robin or mixed type of boundary condition. On the solid wall if temperature is prescribed it is Dirichlet, if the constant heat flux is prescribed it is a Neumann boundary condition. So, after uh, starting with the uh, equations in a dimensional non dimensional form uh, I had shown you the initial and boundary condition. So, now another important thing which you need in as I said in fluid mechanics is that one is the what you call as the engineering parameter, which are also called as the integral parameter. I, I am showing you here how to calculate this engineering parameter like drag force, lift force and the rate of heat transfer. Basically they are cal calculated using a surface integral like for flow across a car or flow across an aeroplane or flow across a circular cylinder you have to take a take the surface and the surface is a closed surface and on that closed surface you have to do this integration. Now, what is this integration? You have n dot sigma, what is this n? n is the unit normal vector. So, if it is a curved surface unit normal vector will vary from point to point. If it is a horizontal surface what will be this n? It will be j. If it is a vertical surface, this n will be i, i hat. In general, if it is an inclined flat plate, this normal unit vector will have a i plus b j. Sigma is a second order tensor. So, the dot product of a vector with a second order tensor is a vector. So, you get net force. This force will act in any arbitrary direction. Now, this force has a horizontal component which is called as a drag force and a vertical component. So, this is called as a lift force, this is a total force which is acting on the object which may be surface of the car or aeroplane. So, this horizontal component if you want you have to take the dot product of this with i. Okay. So, this if you take the dot product of this with i you get a horizontal component if you take a dot product with j then you get this vertical component okay and this stresses varies point to point on the surface of a car or an aeroplane you have to do a surface integral to calculate the total drag force total lift force now when you want to calculate the rate of heat transfer unit normal vector this is a here it was dot product of a unit normal vector with a tensor. In heat transfer stress is a tensor, but what about the rate of heat transfer? Heat flux it is a vector. So, the dot product of a unit normal vector with another vector will, will give you a component which is a q x plus b q y. Okay. So, this I am showing you a more generic mirror if you look into undergraduate heat transfer uh, books these are shown in much more simplified manner. 
here I had taken an example of flow across a horizontal plate and I had shown you expression of the drag force and the lift force. Here uh, the unit normal vector is uh, plus j on the top side minus j on the uh, bottom side and using this expressions uh, what you finally get is shown here. So, I will stop here.